SpaceX has just finished stacking Booster 19, a job that would normally take around six months, but this time, they pulled it off in just two weeks. How is that even possible? And when you look at Ship 39, things get even more interesting. It has completely disappeared inside Mega Bay 2, where it's been stacked and quietly finalized for weeks now. These unusually aggressive moves alone are a strong sign that the Starship Flight 12 launch date is closer than ever. So, where do both vehicles really stand right now? And when exactly is the new Flight 12 launch window? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. In last week's Starship Flight 12 update, we already saw just how hard SpaceX was pushing the completion of Booster 19. Four major sections, along with its massive fuel transfer tube, were moved nonstop from Star Factory into Mega Bay 1 in just a single week. They were stacked together quickly, but from there, things only got crazier. On the morning of the 10th, a shiny LOX header tank was rolled right in front of Mega Bay 1. This component attaches to the lower end of the transfer tube, and it was soon moved inside MB1, where installation work began almost immediately. By the 12th, the doors of Mega Bay 2 opened, revealing Booster 19 being lifted, a clear sign that the LOX header tank installation had already been completed. Normally, this kind of work takes an entire week because it requires extremely careful welding to prevent leaks. This time, just over one day. That's insanely fast. Then, two days later, on the 14th, Booster 19's aft section was finally moved into Mega Bay 1. This is the most complex and critical section of the entire booster. It houses all 33 Raptor engines and the thrust puck and thrust dome, the main structure that handles the engine's enormous loads. This section is stacked last for a reason. It requires extensive preparation, installing all 33 engines, testing plumbing, adding shielding, mounting grid fins, and sometimes even running a standalone cryogenic proof test. It's the heaviest and most delicate section, and stacking it too early risks serious damage. As of now, Booster 19 is still being assembled inside Mega Bay 1, not quite finished yet, which is expected, given how complex this section is. But it's projected to wrap up soon, likely within this week. As early as next week, the full structure could be completed and sent for X-ray inspections to verify structural integrity and check for cracks, if any. This pace is significantly faster than most observers anticipated. After the Booster 18 incident, many assumed booster timelines would slow down considerably. Even though SpaceX stated B-19 would be stacked in December, many still expected final production to stretch into January. Instead, starting in late November, SpaceX ramped up operations and has maintained that aggressive tempo ever since. If production wraps up within the next two weeks, SpaceX could end the year with a full cryogenic proof test. That would leave the first half of January 2026 for engine work and static fire testing, opening up a very real window for Starship Flight 12 to launch in late January. But of course, the launch date also depends on Ship 39. And right now, the situation there looks pretty encouraging. On the 8th, Ship 39 was still standing tall inside Mega Bay 2, big, dark, and glossy, almost like a battle-ready steel beast. But by the 13th, the doors of MB2 opened to reveal something strange. The ship was gone from the center work stand. So, what happened? Ship 39 was temporarily moved out to make room for the installation of the methane and liquid oxygen autogenous pressurization raceways. Once those structures were lifted and attached to the stand, the doors closed again, and the ship was lifted back onto the stand so the installation could be completed. And sure enough, on the morning of the 16th, the doors of Mega Bay 2 opened once again, and there it was, Ship 39, right back in its original position. The good news is, Ship 39 is now very close to being finished. We're not far from seeing it roll out for cryogenic testing, possibly even before Christmas. But for Flight 12 to happen on such an aggressive timeline, potentially as early as late January, the rapid progress on Booster 19 and Ship 39 is only part of a much bigger picture. Every system tied to the launch campaign has to move forward in parallel. And one of the most important developments right now is happening at Starbase Pad 2. This new launch pad is being built as a next-generation platform designed to support Starship Phi 3 and installation work there is continuing with clear momentum. One of the most notable recent additions is the Service Quick Disconnect, or SQD, 
which has just been positioned as part of the broader integration process. While smaller remaining components are still being prepped for installation, SpaceX has been running continuous testing at the pad. The most eye-catching of these tests involves the Flame Trench Deluge system, designed to protect both the pad and the vehicle by dumping massive amounts of water to suppress heat and pressure during high-energy tests and launch events. The latest deluge test took place on the afternoon of the 10th, and it wasn't a one-off. Another test was conducted on the 9th, with an earlier one on the 5th, bringing the total to three full-scale deluge activations in just one week. Most footage came from far away, making it hard to fully appreciate the system's power. But alternative angles from much closer vantage points tell a very different story. In the most recent images, captured from across one end of the flame trench, the sheer force of the water becomes obvious. The spray reaches impressive heights, and the volume pouring out of the nozzles clearly shows the system is ready to support much more powerful vehicles in the future. And the very first rocket expected to use this new deluge system is Booster 19, a prototype that's currently being pushed through production at an astonishing pace. That urgency didn't come out of nowhere. In many ways, it was the Booster 18 incident at Massey's site that gave us this rare glimpse of just how fast SpaceX can really move when everything is pushed to the limit. It's a sad story, of course, but at the same time, it's also encouraging to see how rapidly the company continues to evolve. And honestly, it probably won't be long before the kind of progress we now consider fast starts to look slow. That's because right next to the Megabays, SpaceX is building something even bigger, the Gigabay. This is the golden key to turning Starship into a truly mass-produced vehicle. Gigabay isn't just a larger version of the existing Megabays. It's a massive manufacturing complex with 24 dedicated work zones, directly connected to Star Factory through six enormous doors. That layout will allow rings and major vehicle sections to move smoothly and rapidly between facilities, faster than anything SpaceX has ever done before. Over the past few months, we've watched Gigabay rise at an astonishing pace at Starbase. The first steel frame level is now complete, crews are racing to install the second level, and most recently, massive crane components have arrived on site. These four tower cranes are self-lifting, meaning they'll climb higher as the building grows, and in the end, they'll lift the entire roof structure into place, finishing the building from the outside without the need for complex scaffolding. Just imagine this. Once completed around late 2026, Gigabay is expected to stand roughly 115 meters tall, about twice the height you're seeing in the latest images today. It will be one of the largest industrial structures on Earth and a critical step toward SpaceX's ultimate goal, producing thousands of starships every single year. And before we know it, Starship could be flying more routinely than Falcon 9. At that point, launches may no longer feel as exciting as they do today. There won't be millions of people tuning in to live streams just to watch Super Heavy land back on Mechazilla, or crowds erupting in applause every time Starship successfully deploys a payload. But that's a necessary trade-off, the price of progress toward a better future. And who knows? What lies ahead may be far more exciting than today's test flights. We could soon witness Starship landing directly into Mechazilla's arms. We could see tense, high-stakes orbital refueling tests happening in a real time above Earth. We could watch Starship HLS touch down on the moon, see SpaceX begin building Moon Base Alpha, or even send dozens of starships toward Mars on the first true interplanetary expeditions. Those moments are far more thrilling than routine test flights, and they're coming sooner than many people think. When they arrive, they'll bring Elon Musk's Mars dream closer than ever before. So, are you excited for that future? If you are, drop a Go SpaceX in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to witness this incredible future together with us. Thanks. Now, let's move on to some newer news. Elon Musk's dream of putting data centers into space is quickly becoming one of the most radical ideas of the AI era, and SpaceX is the workhorse driving that vision forward. Over the past few months, Musk has repeatedly posted on X about deploying orbital data centers built around upgraded Starlink 5's three satellites. These would be much larger super satellites linked together by high-speed laser connections, effectively turning them into AI computing hubs floating above Earth. The motivation behind this idea comes from the massive challenges facing AI on the ground. Traditional data centers are extremely power-hungry, 
AI systems like Grok or ChatGPT consume enormous amounts of electricity, putting strain on power grids, driving up land usage, and pushing cooling costs through the roof. Musk sees space as the perfect solution. Abundant solar energy available nearly 24-7 thanks to sun-synchronous orbits, natural cooling in the cold vacuum of space, and ultra-fast laser links between satellites that can even reduce latency compared to undersea fiber cables. More importantly, this approach could allow Musk to support XAI, his AI company, at an unprecedented scale, reaching gigawatt level or even multi-terawatt level computing capacity per year without relying on Earth-based infrastructure. The benefits go beyond pure efficiency. Orbital data centers could significantly reduce environmental impact. According to a report from the International Telecommunication Union, carbon emissions from leading AI systems could reach as much as 102.6 million tons of CO, two equivalent per year, contributing directly to climate change. Musk's concept aims to eliminate much of that footprint. Experts believe SpaceX could actually make this work thanks to dramatically lower launch costs, potentially just a few thousand dollars per kilogram, enabled by fully reusable rockets like Starship, making orbital data centers feasible as early as 2027. That said, major challenges remain, including difficult maintenance and the risk of radiation damaging sensitive chips. With a potential record-breaking IPO in 2026 that could raise tens of billions of dollars, Musk is positioning this idea as a lever to push SpaceX's valuation toward an estimated $800 billion. This isn't just a leap forward for AI, it may also be a key stepping stone toward Mars, where orbital computing could support long-term space settlement. It's a crazy idea. But with Elon Musk, crazy has a habit of turning into reality.